Next up, we have Jeremy Bloom, who is an undergraduate senior majoring in electrical and computer engineering at Cornell. In addition to taking classes, Jeremy leads the Cornell University Sustainable Design 150-person interdisciplinary design build team and does research in the Creative Machines Lab. He's constantly developing new open source projects and has released nearly 100 video tutorials that aim to teach people about electronics and engineering. He maintains a video series and blog sponsored by Element 4 Electronics and is presently employed by MakerBot Industries designing open source electronics for, for their personal 3D printers. In his spare time, Jeremy also works on ending world hunger, solving cancer, and enjoys long walks on the beach. <laughs> in, all seriousness, in all seriousness, though, please join me in welcoming uh, the extremely accomplished Jeremy to the stage. I'm Jeremy Blum. I'm going to be talking about how open source <laughs> software and hardware can be expanded to the rest of society to help improve sharing and collaboration. Okay. Uh, so first off, you all suck at sharing, uh, and you probably know this. Raise your hand if you hated sharing as a kid. Yeah, come on, admit it. No one likes sharing. We have toys. We don't want other kids to play with them. They're going to break it. You know, it's a pain in the ass. Um, so we, we, we've established a system in the United States and around the world that protects the things that are ours because we don't want people to share them. They're ours. Other people can't have them. We have copyrights. We have the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. We have the Patent Office. People hate to share their ideas because when you come up with an idea, it's yours and you want to maintain ownership of it. If someone steals it from you, that's not fair and they benefit from what you did. No one likes that. So, and sharing equals bad business. So suppose you have this patent, and this is an actual patent, by the way. I could not tell you what exactly it's supposed to do. Um, it's some kind of remote baby spanking machine. I don't know. It's patented in the US Patent Office. Obviously, someone came up with this and thought, this is a really great idea. Um, I came up with this. I want to make sure that no one else steals it and makes an, uh, th this awesome product. Uh, I need it to have it to myself. So it was patented. Now no one else who has an amazing idea to make a remote baby spanking machine uh, can have it produced. And that's great. Th it now belongs to you. No one else can touch it. Awesome. And yet, we have this kind of strange fascination with sharing these minute details about our everyday life. I'm sure almost everyone in here has a Facebook or a Twitter. Um, we all get updates now when you go to the bathroom or what you ate for dinner today. Most of the time, we probably don't care, but you seem to love sharing these things. And people love sharing these details about their personal life. But yet, when it comes into the business world or things that we're making hands-on, we don't want anyone else to have any idea how we made it. And more importantly, we don't anyone, want anyone else to steal that idea and make it themselves and make money off of it. So, the idea of open source in general has been to kind of flip this paradigm on its head. Uh, take the idea of copyright and turn it into copyleft. Uh, copyleft is, this ac is an actual thing. I'm not clever enough to come up with the term on my own. Um, copyleft is this idea of taking the whole process of your design, of making any given product, be it hardware, software, uh, clothing, architectural designs, anything, uh, and to release all of that to the public. And you might think, you know, why would you do that? You're giving, you're giving away everything that you know. Um, but so let, let me explain kind of what open source is. And I'm sure most people here are familiar with it in some regard. Guaranteed every person in this room has used a piece of open source software. Chances are you've used Firefox or Chrome or Linux operating systems. I bet half the people in this room have phones that are running on Android, which is Linux based. Um, you probably have a set top box on top of your television, which is Linux based. These are all open source platforms. And so the great thing about open source is it gives you a lot of opportunities in development. Uh, you can you do distributed peer review. You send out the source that you're working on. You send out what's going on, and the community is interested and they want to help, and they help you develop it. You get transparency, so people see what you're doing and can correct errors as you're making it instead of you releasing a product that's complete crap, uh, and everyone realizes afterwards everything that's wrong with it. Uh, it allows you to share ideas and information. You get a better quality product because you're able to get feedback from the people who are using that product all the way through the development cycle. That really leads to higher reliability, more flexibility, because the people using that product now have full access to understand how it works. And this does not have to just apply to electronics. This can apply to anything. Um, you can hack the product, and I don't mean hack in the sense of you know, someone trying to break into your computer. Hacking is a much more broad term that's often misused, and the idea is you can hack hardware or hack any open source device because you have an understanding of how it works. And this, in the end, leads to lower cost because you spend less money in development because the community helps make developments for you. 
I'm not saying we should open source everything. Um, intercontinental ballistic missiles are not something that should have their designs shared on the open market for anyone to play with and build their own in their backyard. I'm not saying some people won't try to do it anyway, um, but yeah, open source is obviously not applicable to everything. I'm not saying everything we do should be transparent and we should share everything. That doesn't make sense either. But what I can say is that sharing is caring. Uh, and this is something we all learn when we're kids because we hate sharing, and our parents say, you, you have to share, you'll, you'll benefit from it, and it's true, and this, this relates back to the open source community. When you were a kid and your, your parents said, uh, you know, share your Legos, share your toys, whatever, because then the, that person will share their things with you and you both benefit, and the same thing kind of relates here. So these are a few projects that I've done. Um, this is a glove gesture controller that you use to drive a remote control car around. It's a fun, like, little toy that I developed two years ago. Um, a few weeks or so after I released all the code for it, it's all open source, this teenager in uh, high school came up to me or emailed me. Uh, we've, I've now been mentoring him for the last year, and he wanted to develop a similar glove that he could use to control a robotic claw, which is this thing right here. Uh, so you move your hand and the claw does the same motions. And he used some of my code to do that. Uh, and he then went on to win his local science fair, his national, the national science fair, um, and was featured in the issue of Popular Mechanics uh, about a month ago. Uh, and that's really, really cool. And I mean, my thing wasn't featured in Popular Mechanics, but it's awesome to see that something that in, in the beginning uh, protruded from an idea that I had is awesome. And I learned a lot from this experience getting to work with him and do things like that. And I mean, there's some other examples too. I do a lot of uh, video series teaching people how to use electronics. So this was a temperature sensor that I had made for my room. Uh, literally with less than 24 hours after I posted online, someone got back to me with this interface which looks much cooler and nicer and they, you know, handed out all the design files for it. Everyone benefits for it. This was a system that I developed for controlling a bunch of speakers off of a microcontroller. Uh, within about a week of posting it, there were 30 comments, half of which were telling me all the things I did wrong and could do better. Uh, one person completely rewrote the code in a different lang uh, programming language and made it about 50 times more efficient, uh, which I then used in my design where I was using that code. So I benefited from it instantaneously. So where did this all kind of begin? In, in 1985, the Free Software Foundation was started with the idea of kind of bringing open source to the masses and using this development scheme to make software uh, that all people have access to and that can be developed by the community, which is this really awesome idea. And Linux kind of sprouted up from that a few, few years later. And like I said, a lot of you probably use Linux without even realizing it. Some of you might actually use it as your desktop computing platform too. Um, the TEDx uh, Cornell University website runs on a Linux server as well as about 60% of the other servers in the world. Uh, it's by far the largest computing platform platform in, in terms of servers, and it's all open source. But that's all software, right? And so this recent revolution has been bringing the idea of open source software into the physical world, and this is how this is happening. This is the Arduino. Uh, I do a lot of video series with this. Uh, it's this small microcontroller platform. It's used by artists. It's used by engineers. Uh, it's used by scientists. It's used by people doing instrumental data collection. All these awesome little things that you can do, and it's entirely open source, and people build products off of it. Uh, this is the MakerBot 3D printer. I have mine over there, uh, and it prints 3D objects for you. You put in a design, you design something on your computer, or you download online, and a few minutes later, you have something that is a physical representation of what you just designed on your computer. That device is 100% open source. You, instead of the buying it from the company, you can put it together using the plans they put online if you want. Some of you might, familiar with, uh, might be familiar with the CERN Large Hadron Collider. Who here is familiar with that? Can we get a show of hands? Okay. For those who aren't, uh, this is a giant particle collider uh, in Switzerland. It is the most expensive human scientific endeavor ever conducted, and they are trying to find the Higgs boson slash God particle, uh, which will assist in theoretical physics. Um, they were the first group to release an open hardware license, so that they, a legally binding open hardware license, so that they can release part of their plans as open source. Again, benefit from not so much our community, because I don't know a whole lot about theoretical physics, maybe Jeff does, um, but from the, the physics community. Okay, so I also do a bunch of open source stuff. This is a robot that plays Guitar Hero, a claw that you can control over the internet and it moves around, an RGB art exhibit display, a jack-in-the-box. Um, this is a Nerf sentry gun that fires at you when you walk in the room. This is a glove I talked about earlier. That's the MakerBot. I designed electronics for it. This is a belt I made the other day that lights up and says Cornell University. Um, that's the Fab at Home, which Jeff talked about earlier. Uh, temperature sensor slash weather station for Cornell and a bunch of other th um, thermostat things and a hundred other projects that I've done. Um, and the reason I do this is not because like I'm bored. I'm pretty busy. I got other stuff going on. Um, 
but I, I do this because it benefits the community, and I get this amazing feedback, and I learn from it. Uh, and to a degree, it's selfish, absolutely. I learn so much from doing this, way more than you do from sitting in a classroom, and this is something that's been touched on several times tonight. If we're rethinking our society, part of that is rethinking the way we learn. Uh, and a big part of that is doing hands-on work, and that's what I aim to promote uh, by making these projects and sharing them. So, but physical things cost money, right? So it's, it's one thing to open source piece of software because you just download it, it's free, that's easy, right? Um, hardware is another story, and this is actually, for fun's sake, this is a uh, money clip that was printed on a MakerBot. Um, so physical things cost money. How do we make that make sense in a business sense? Uh, and people are often confused. If you're giving away the plans or something that you're trying to sell, how can that possibly work? And, well, it does. These are all companies that uh, gross over a million dollars a year doing entirely open source hardware. Uh, SparkFun does over $10 million a year in open source hardware, and it's expected that this will be a $1 billion a year business by the year 2015, which is really, really exciting. But how? Like, how can you design something and give it all away and still make money from it? It doesn't seem to make sense. And the answer is community innovation. So this is something that I touched upon earlier. Community is such a massive part of the open movement. When you design something and everyone has access to it, first off, they don't give you a bunch of shit when you mess something up. Um, because they understand that you're a human being and you make mistakes. Instead, they identify the error and they fix it for you because they want to help be a part of it. And this is something we see, you know, working on the MakerBot a lot. Um, community members will come back and say, oh, you know, this is not accurate. And they'll fix the code and upload it to our, our code service and it'll now be fixed. And guess what? We spent zero development money doing that. That's pretty awesome. So, okay, I'm obviously a huge geek, and this stuff is really exciting to me because I love electronics and robots and, you know, whatever, all that stuff. But why do you guys care? Who cares if you're using a piece of open hardware if it works the same as a piece of closed hardware? And so let, let's talk for a second about how this progression kind of came about. First there was open source software, then there was open source hardware, which is this relatively new idea sharing all the designs for a hardware uh, device. Um, open source ecology is this new thing which is really cool and they're making this thing called the village construction toolkit, uh, which is all the plans, all the schematics, everything you need to make a village out of a box. Um, a machine for making clay bricks, a machine for tilling soil, all of that. And that's an actively developing project right now. I think they've prototyped about a sixth or a fifth of the total products, which is really, really awesome. And I think the next step is open source society. Again, I 3D, that's 3D printed on a MakerBot. Um, so open source society, what, what is that? It's, t it's extracting the ideas of openness and sharing and community and moving it to other aspects of our society. Um, so these might be a little hard to see. This is something done by the, called, something called the Open Graffiti Project, or the Graffiti Research Lab. These are called LED throwies. They release the designs online. You grab some LEDs, some batteries, and magnets, and you throw them up against buildings, and you make graffiti in a city. Um, that's kind of like a social engineering experiment. This is really cool. This is called the iRider Project. Uh, there was a patient, a graffiti artist with ALS. Uh, he lost function of all of his limbs. He can't move. He just has control of his eyelids. He now uses this thing, which was developed entirely by community people. They weren't being paid to do it. It's all open source. Uh, he uses his eye movements to draw graffiti, which they then project onto the side of buildings using lasers. This is the open PCR. This just came out a little while ago. It costs a few hundred bucks, and it allows you to sequence your DNA at home. How cool is that? That's awesome. Um, this is, you know, more on the community end. This was an open source, an open community project to put a uh, blackboard in an impoverished community uh, so that people could work together uh, and express their ideas and communicate with the rest of the community to share ideas and knowledge and information and work together. Uh, this also extends into fashion. Open source fashion is something that's coming around now, and it doesn't just mean light, you know, dresses with pretty lights on them that light up, but it also means open sourcing the design process and getting input from all of your customers and all the people who work with your company to develop open source pieces of fashion. And so in the end here, everyone kind of wins, and this is the part that's exciting to about me, exciting to me. Um, so over here I have, this is a uh, open source cookie and an open source plate. Um, Jeff talked earlier about the Fab at Home, so over there is the Fab at Home and the MakerBot. I printed a plate on my MakerBot, and Jeff printed a cookie on the Fab at Home. Fab at Home does food printing. Yeah, pretty awesome. Um, so, I don't know, maybe the first, like, two people afterwards can have a piece of this cookie, but then it'll be a mob scene, so uh, we'll see. Um, but, yeah, so that's amazing, and these groups can communicate. People who you might ordinarily think to be competitors or people who you ordinarily shouldn't work together can collaborate and do amazing things, uh, and that's what open source society is. Thanks. <laughs>